we're back on Rice Street Southbound of Geranium. Been a very slow but peaceful day today in the beautiful saintly city of St. Paul. Which, by the way, some of that history of how St. Paul got its name. And we're the first St. Paul little cathedral was. It's all in that book. There's a cave over on the Mississippi River that Pierre Pigsay Parent, one of the first traders up here, used to hide his wares in. Thankfully, the town wasn't called Pierre Pigsay. <laughs> Although, as a settlement, yeah. it did carry the name Pigsay for a while. Right. No doubt. Four, four, six. Go ahead. I promise I'm not tricking you, Pat. But I want you to read. Rice, how Rice Street got its name. I will do that. Rice and University. I yeah, scared a lot of this. Sorry about that. <laughs> here we go. Tall and slender, with a fine head upon his shoulders and a commanding presence. Presence. Henry M. Rice. 1816 to 1894 was born in Vermont. He journeyed to Fort Snelling in 1839. So isn't that interesting how all these people that were named after came from other states? Oh yeah, uh, came here for different reasons. Well, we were we were uh, uh, we were kind of the West then. Yeah. We, we, yeah. This, is, right. this is where people ventured to. Opportunity was here. Absolutely. Didn't mean to interrupt. He came to Fort Snelling, and he got into the fur trade and negotiated several American Indian treaties. A decade later with his family, he paddled a birch bark canoe from Mendota down the Mississippi River to St. Paul, where he later built the first residence on Summit Avenue. Oh, that's interesting, right? Yeah. Henry Rice, first residence on Summit Avenue. And uh, Summit Avenue uh, remains to this day a, a rather, uh, prestigious uh, avenue now there's something there's a quote in there that the next quote is something that someone someone wrote about him and we should all strive to be more like this gentleman so we'll read that quote mr rice wins friends by his exceedingly courteous manner he has a swaying motion when he walks is dignified pleasing cautious somewhat retiring in his nature, a fine conversationalist, adverse to publicity, a lover of home, and an honorable, upright, manly citizen. It sounds just like you. <laughs> well, we're going to have to name that Pat Street then. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There's Henry Rice. A little bit of history and a nice man to boot. I don't know. We're gonna drive. We're gonna drive right through Dinky Town on our way to Minneapolis here. But I don't know how Dinky Town got its name. And um, I would like to know. Maybe you can. Monitor I'll have it. to look that up for Maybe you. Maybe you can even monitor that Someone will know. Yeah. Let so, us know how Dinky Town got its name. Williams Arena on our left, and Mariucci, where the Gopher hockey team plays, right there on our right. 3M Arena, they call it now, but uh, still the Mariucci Arena to the rest of the world. So you got basketball on your left, go for hockey on your right. Call the Pfizer, you try calling the RP back, and the phone is not accepting incoming calls. CCF Bank behind us. You have a caution us. note on the location, giving a building entry code, however. And, the, of course, the Gophers hockey team is has the longest-running national championship thing for women. One, the four, the nine, women's nine, hockey five, team, nine. coached by Brad Frost, is just, uh, and this is right there, this is their arena here, Ritter Arena, home of the Gopher women's team. Brad Frost has just done an awesome job there, and my daughter played for the University of North Dakota. And of course, they never beat the Gophers, but... Uh, I can't say she scored on him once. That's all I can say. <laughs> but oh, how long you gotta care, please. Great, have a good great prop program there at the University of Minnesota. 
So we're on, we're our one block over from University Avenue because both these streets are one way. We're on Southeast 4th Street. And this is technically coming into Dinky Town, which is a nice little college town, nice restaurants, shops, etc. But I used to run over here to use a Xerox machine when I was in college because it would, Kinkos would stay open late. But do you have any idea why this is called Dinky Town, Pat? Is anybody? We're still at work. Wait, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Could you put me out at Loring Park with the leasing stuff? Copy. Yeah, well, some of them says Dinky Town. Okay, here we go. Boy, this is a lengthy, lengthy answer. That's okay. The name Dinky Town is of uncertain origin, although it was in definite use by 1948 when the Dinky Town Business Association was formed. Stories regarding the origin of the name include the streetcars called Dinkies that used to provide transit through the area. That makes some sense. Similarly, the locomotive tenders at the nearby rail yard were called Dinkies due to their compact size. The theater in Dinky Town had only four rows of seats and for years was known as the Dinky Theater. Shortly thereafter, it was just the Dinky. Okay. Clever. Then there's Dinkies, double income, no kids yet. <laughs> it's a small town like area, everything is within walking distance. Speaking of run on, there was a story in that book. Your street book? Street book. It was very interesting. You know, there's some. The loss. That's what it was. Where's the book? Did we get the book? Yep. This is the story about the West Side, which I found fascinating. Maybe if you don't mind reading it. Not at all. Uh, the, the Lost Street over there on the West Side. The West Side is on the West Side of the river, but it's just interesting history. The Lost Monfort, 1835 to 1899. Now this is a fascinating story. He's a, he was a prominent banker. I'll leave the rest to you. This is the guy's. This guy saved people's lives. Yeah. To Los Monfort. First traveled through St. Paul in 1854, which is when St. Paul was actually first established as a city. Came back in 1857. Beginning with Charles McCubbin, another street name, McCubbin. Yep. And Erastus Edgerton, another street name, yep. in their banking house, he subsequently became cashier for the Second National Bank, with which he remained off and on for the remainder of his career. In his early years at People's Bank, he won an extraordinary race to St. Peter, Minnesota. Now picture this. The bank, there's a run on the banks and your bank is going to be destabilized because you don't have enough money to pay your people. And, but they have notes, they want to get their money and you have bank notes on another bank. So he's got to run to St. Peter by horseback. Because he, he knew they had $5,000 in gold as a redemption and he, fund. He has the cash notes for that 5,000, but whoever gets there first is going to get them from all the banks. So I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, that's Keep all right. Uh, its messenger, DeLoss A. Monfort, gathered up $5,000 of the Nicollet banknotes and set out for St. Peter on horseback, riding three horses to exhaustion and not drawing a bridle to save, uh, save to make the relays. He passed every other carrier on the road, and made the 78 miles in eight hours on horseback. He secured the gold. The following morning, he set out and returned to St. Paul just in time. There was a run on the People's Bank, and the last dollar was in sight when Cashier Monfort staggered in with his heavy pair of saddlebags. The reinforcement was believed to consist of $25,000 instead of $5,000. The run subsided and was soon over. There you have it. There you have it. Fascinating little piece of history for Mr. DeLoss, right? Yeah. I'll look at that street the same way ever again. Never. And who thinks they were going to change those streets to ABCs? <laughs> okay. So, Larry Ho Street, that's named after Lawrence Hodgkin. 
who was the mayor of St. Paul in 1919. You think there wasn't room for his whole name? I guess. Yeah, Larry Ho's a little easier than Lawrence Hodgkin. Maybe that was his name. Okay. Hey, right. And silly me, Don Ho sang Tiny Bubbles. Well, there is that. <laughs> I have spent my entire time in St. Paul thinking, wondering why Larry Ho, why there was a street named after a Hawaiian guy yeah. in St. Paul. Well, now we know. Now I know. It's good to know those little pieces. This is the back door to XL, and uh, I'm just going to show you Herbie Brooks. There he is. Herbie Brooks. The Miracle on Ice Man. Nine Victory of the Minnesota or United States over the uh, over Russia, Soviet Union. This is our St. Paul Library here. Presidents have visited here. That looks just right. So there's the uh, conservatory. <coughs> Beautiful building. And um, of course, behind there is Sparky the Seal, <laughs> Casey the Gorilla. Oh, I think Casey's passed away now, right? I'm looking. 